This is a very special wheel, special to me at least, because it's the first one I've ever laced and built. But I must say, with considerable help from this man here, Marcel Wildman, who is a master wheel builder at DT Swift, with over 35 years of experience on building wheels. Who better then to show us how to build a bicycle wheel? Building a wheel is a time-consuming job, but with patience and carefully following the steps, anyone can do it. Although it's probably worth making a cup of tea and settling yourself down. This is a strangely therapeutic process. We are lacing a traditional wheel with the common three-cross method, so-called because each spoke crosses three others. We'll lace it, pre-tension it, dish it, de-stress it, true it, and then tension it fully. First though, what do we actually need to build a wheel? So first step, we've got our raw materials. So we've got our spokes, we've got the nipples, we've got the hub and the rim. Uh, Marcel, how do we actually calculate, first of all, the spoke length? It's, we need the EOD, the rim diameter. Okay. From the one eyelet to the other eyelet. How big is the hub? Yep. And how big is the distance between the middle of the hub to the flange okay. on the right side? and also on the left side. Oh, that sounds remarkably complicated. So you can, there is a, there is a cheat online. You could go yeah. to the DT Swiss, web, web, DT Swiss website and it'll yeah. tell you. Okay, well that's a relief. Now, it's for DT Swiss, we have a rule. Yeah. Every time it's the DT Swiss, it's on the valve hole. Ah, okay. So your tire logo is lined up with your hub logo. <laughs> yeah. Nice. We're going to use Schrainer's method. Now we'll start on the right side of the wheel, so that means on the rear wheel, it's the drive side. With this method, each spoke is threaded into the wheel at an alternate direction, with either the spoke head facing in towards the centre of the hub or out. The first step is really important, so we'll take a moment to cover it. We start lacing each side of the wheel at the valve hole. We thread spoke one, four holes in the hub to the left of the centre, with the head out and then thread one four holes to the right of center head in now that is very important the first spoke is laced to the rim immediately to the left of the valve hole then the second spoke which is threaded into the hub from the inside out is laced to the rim in the second hole to the right of the valve wow feels like we're getting somewhere <laughs> excellent Okay. We then thread all the drive side spokes which will have their heads facing out. They will of course be in every other hole in the hub. Taking the spoke next to the one that's already threaded onto the rim, lace it into the rim four holes to the right. You then repeat that for the remaining spokes. If every time the same one, two, three holes. Yeah. The next one it's for us. Four holes. Yeah, in the fourth. When you work from the top the nipple falls every time falls yeah. down. <laughs> and now when you work from the side, it's no problem. That does make sense. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, turn the wheel. Yes. And then you can feel the hole from this side. Then we thread the remaining drive side spokes into the hub from the opposite direction. Starting with that spoke that's already laced, thread the next one into the rim, four holes to the left. Okay. Next. So we went from the one that was next to the, the valve hole, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So it, four across from, yeah. from that. Okay. One, uh, not four across, four holes. The outside. It's four holes, yeah, sorry. The, now it's and are we, best is it goes in here. Have your fingers on the thread. The thread yeah. is very sharp for the... Ah, okay. And then it goes here. Nipple. And it goes over. So oh, under, not here, over. Under, over, yes. Under, over, yeah. okay. So drive side, yeah. that looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, looks okay. We're repeating the process on the non-drive side of the wheel now, but we use exactly the same method. So we lace those first two spokes, separated by eight holes at the hub. And we do one to the left of the valve hole, and then the other two holes to the right. It's starting to get complicated. The more, the more spokes we've got, yeah. They're more complicated so, game. Okay. Uh, better we go this way. Okay. So you can go up. So Okay, so that one. So one, two, three, four. Yeah. So that one there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. okay. Turn. And fill up the last. Okay. Do we start the from there? Uh, from here again? Yeah. I can't tell you how cool this is. Right, I've been riding bikes for like 27 years and I've never built a wheel before. Yeah. This is fantastic. Okay. Okay. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Check it out. Well, I'm chuffed with that. So what's the next bit? The next bit, we go to the drawing stand. The wheel is now correctly laced, but we need to tension the spokes. We need to make sure the wheel is dished correctly, meaning that it will sit centrally in your frame or fork. Remember that by over tightening one side or another, you can actually move the rim itself by several millimeters. Then we need to true it, so make sure it's perfectly round and perfectly straight. By over tightening some spokes, you can actually create flat spots or bend the wheel from one side to another. The first job is to pre-tension the wheel. Make sure that each spoke is threaded into the nipple the same amount. So, wheel is in the truing stand, but we're gonna do some cheating now. Is that fair to say, Marcel? You've got a drill in your hand. Yeah, the work with the drill. Before we work by hand and we look how goes the nipple over the thread. So you, li you literally count the number of threads? Yeah, it's normally it goes before. It's pretty labor you make this the whole day, <laughs> then maybe in the evening you can feel also your arms. Okay, can, I, can I have a go with the drill? Yeah. Even with a drill, it's slow going for me. Now we have a, a base. Yeah. And from this one we go. Take it to the next level. Yeah. yeah. All right. Every spoke comes from the inside to turn a half. So. Just a half. Just a half. But if, if say, you were lacing up a, I don't know, a Shimano Dura Ace hub, then. Also. So also you need yeah. to do half a turn. So yeah. this little gizmo here tells us exactly how straight the wheel yeah. is. Is that right? It's, it's, it's here. 0.15 maybe. Okay. But sometimes it's not, it works the watch like this. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now we look for the dish. So what's, yeah. what's it supposed to be on? Zero? It's zero and uh, five. So 0 0.4 millimeters? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't sound too bad. No, 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 it's 0 0.6, sorry. 0 0.6 millimetres. Yeah. That's, That's start, starting to sound worse, but... Some, some brands have this, it's okay. Uh, for us, it's a little bit too high. Now it's with 0 0.6 out. Okay. And then we remove the rim on the right, left side. Uh, not 0 0.6, 0 0.3. Okay. This side of the rim comes also the same. Okay. So we're going to increase the spoke tension on... The drive side? No. Non-drive side? No, non-drive side. Okay. You can, now you can work here. You can turn here. Yeah. And the, the goes up to the zero. Okay. Not <laughs> correct um, here. But okay. next time when you come, you can see it go, maybe goes a little bit over. Ah, okay. Uh, so, and how much little, are we turning? Little steps. So. Oh, you're not doing much though, so it's no. a real... Yeah, I look only on the watch. So the, so the wheel is pretty much straight in both directions, but now we need to check the spoke tension just to make sure that... Yeah. So that says, what's that, one... One, one to fit the middle, you have one, and uh, you can lose a little bit, you have nine, four. So 0 0.94. Yeah. Okay. And then do we check the, the next... The next Drive side one? Or yeah, the next? Oh, every time on the same side. Okay. Side. Okay, so that's one point. What's that? One point one? Yeah. And is that okay? No, right. we go later. We go up. We make it more similar. Okay. What's? And we need to we need to hold the spoke tension ometer yeah. in the right place on the spoke so that it gives the same reading each time. Not so too much down and not too much up. So we're going to add a little bit more tension to the spokes. A quarter turn on yep. each nipple, starting from the valve hole. Yep. Okay? Right. Ready? Quarter turn. Uh, every time on the right side. Ah, okay, so we're Sorry. doing one side. Yeah. Right, okay. Only, only right, yes. 
we got the wheel and we go to the distressor. Here we have three points. We have uh, a lot of pressure. Then we put it in. So push. You can hear the sound from the spokes. And now we go back to the drawing stand. Okay. So before we have zero point, it's, it's the same, zero point five, zero and five. They're all the same. Okay, Marcel, so you, you still think we need to get a bit more spoke tension in this. Yeah. If, you, uh, if, if a viewer at home doesn't have a spoke tension meter, how, you, how can you describe how tight the spokes need to be on a wheel before you know that it's done? For me, it's uh, when you go there with the hand, you can feel it. At, yeah, maybe this one here, it's a little bit too soft. Maybe we turn a half turn up with yeah. the tension. And then everybody have some, he want a softer wheel or a stronger wheel, then uh, he goes a little bit more up or... So, yeah. so, so the spoke tension will actually affect the ride quality of the wheel? Yeah. So, you, you know, softer spokes mean a softer wheel yeah. and a higher tension spokes mean a stiffer wheel. Yeah. Okay. And so actually there's a, unless you've got a spoke tension meter on there, there's a, it's an art form. Yeah. That's, that's what you're saying, like yeah. it's just... Not enough. It's the feeling in, in your hand. Okay. Now we work every, in every wheel, we work with the same tension. Yeah. The front in the, this range and the back the rear wheel in this range. And uh, so we have uh, all wheels they similar. Yeah. Some it's a little bit higher, like the, in the combination between the hub, the spokes, and the rim. Uh, the other ones, it's all in the same range. There we go. Wow, a finished wheel. I can't yes. claim to have done this completely by myself. It's a downhill wheel, and uh, you have a downhill bike? No, 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 I don't actually have a downhill bike, but... Then it's my wheel. You, you take that. <laughs> well, there we go then, a finished wheel. Now that is built very much in the classic style, so a traditional wheel. But Marcel here is currently lacing up a very new wheel, so it's an ARC 1100 die cut. And as wheel design has evolved, you can see the way that wheels are built is also changing. So it's quite a fluid technology at the moment. Thank you very much, though, Marcel, for showing us how to build a traditional wheel. No problem. That is something I've ticked off my bucket list. Now, do make sure you subscribe to GCN before leaving this video. To do so is completely free. You just click on the globe. Also, make sure you give this a big thumbs up. Thank you again to myself for showing us how. And if you want some more content right now, well, how about how to true a wheel? That one is just down there. Or to see a little feature, retro versus modern wheels, click just down there.